The 2023 Nissan Z is an elusive little asshole in the marketplace right now, okay? I'm gonna take it back. In the fall of 2021, nearly everyone was excited to get their hands on a Nissan Z, a sports car that was originally touted at a $41,000 price tag with a manual transmission, twin turbos, wheel-wheel drive, and 400 horsepower. It was Nissan's answer to the Toyota Supra that set at $52,085. The 12 car enthusiast that still had a job at the time that this car was supposed to be dropped they were in tears, okay? Finally, something from Nissan that was new that wasn't 14 years old of a GTR. You wanna know something that's not new for a Nissan? Taking their sweet ass time, okay? Because around April 27th of 2022, Nissan announced delays on the car due to semiconductors, something that seemed to plague every manufacturer short of Lamborghini because they were making like 14 cars at the time, okay? The delay push the cars further into summer, only to then be delayed again in the fall. And like James Cameron in the first Avatar, the project seemed to get bumped just enough away so that most people that saw it for like 10 years kind of forgot that the movie was even being made, which was a bit overkill if you ask me, but hey. And then in the winter of 2022 and then into 2023, something magical happened. For, for some reason or another, everyone important seemed to get one. And that was it, because there was only like seven Zs in the states. And like Mewtwo, only the main characters got airtime with the thing, and the rest of us NPCs got nothing. Nothing, okay? It was terrible. Needless to say, I was a bit sad, because since 2020, I have been waiting for this car. And the departure of my 1976 Datsun Tweety Z back in 2017, I always told myself I'd get another one. And it's finally here. Behind me is a car that had 389 miles before this weekend and now has 810, which is only 190 miles before I can get out of the break-in period, which means it's time to talk about my experience with the Nissan Z that isn't backed by some massive partnership with Nissan. It's just me getting my lucky grubby little hands on it. Let's talk about it. 400 horsepower VR30 DDT engine or RZ34 model code is fun. No matter who you talk to, it is fun. The 300 foot pounds of torque is fun. This is the engine that I think so many people wanted actually in the 370Z and even the 350Z. And it does kind of feel like a mini R35, but like all good things, it's not new development since it shares its underwear with the Infiniti Q60 Red Sport 400. But that's like, I don't know, comparing a steak at Arby's to one at a supper club. Same name, but different function. Now, I do absolutely love what Nissan did after listening to people who were destroying them in the cooling issues with the Red Sport, which the Red Sport did have some cooling issues. Cooling was always one of the massive issues, which tells me that walking up to the engine should be a little bit more reliable in terms of modifying this car. Now, we're not trying to be a nine second car, but depending on what you tell us to do with it, we do wanna add some more power to really wake up the chassis. And making sure that the cooling was upgraded on this car from factory does tell us that they're trying to make improvements on that front. But that is kind of where some of this starts to fade because the driving experience is different. The chassis feels doggish. It brings up to like what I think is one of Nissan's kryptonite manufacturing processes and they just do this every year. Nissan to me, for some reason, always does one thing with their cars. That it's just like this one major category thing that feels off and to me, that's the suspension. We went from Appleton, Wisconsin down to Chicago and back up with this car. And we went there for an anniversary. It was a blast and I had a fun time. As I was driving the car and going through the highway roads and doing some twisty turlies on the back roads, the suspension didn't ever really feel like it was as connected to the road as some of the other newer sports cars I've felt that had stock suspension. This almost feels like to me, like a luxury sports car. It's like borderline on that level of comfort as I'm driving through town. Now, people do complain a little bit about the road noise. I don't think that's Nissan's fault. I think that's the fact that they went with Bridgestone tires. I think that's the number one reason you hear a little bit of road noise. Outside of that, the car just feels like it's a little bit more GT than it is a sports car. And the suspension is just so soft that no matter what it seems you'd be cruising at, you never really feel like it's firming up on you. And again, this is one of those weird things with every other car coming to market that has five different suspension opportunities and layouts like Sport, Comfort, Comfort Plus, Race, Eco, all those things. This doesn't have that. So to see Nissan kind of take a break from that and just put whatever's in here, I would say that if you're looking for more of a sport oriented driving experience, you're gonna have to get it from the aftermarket side of things. But, but is important. Sometimes you just have to have faith in Nissan and taking a look back at their history, it's not like they have a bad track record, okay? Think about it. It does feel a little bit more like the 300ZX on this than the 350Z when it was launched, 
but it's a good thing when you think about it. It's just a little bit different. It's not what you would expect. It's a little bit heavier, but it's a little bit more luxurious. The 300ZX, when it launched, almost featured the same exact things as the Z is being launched right now. If you look back at some of the old articles, they're comparable almost one to one. But here is the kicker for me, because getting this car requires one thing that I think has absolutely crushed people's enthusiasm and excitement around this platform. And it doesn't start with the letter A or B or C, it starts with D. And that is these dealerships that seem to be gatekeeping these cars like nobody's business. Nissan's allocation process is super weird. It's unlike anything else. They seem to kind of spit fire out these allocations to dealerships and they don't really have a great rhyme or reason. It's not based on dealership. It's based on regional sales. So you can sometimes find a random Z in an area that you would never expect before, but going getting them in the Southwest or even East Coast is really hard. Now I got this one from Bergstrom. This is one of the first ones in, the, in Wisconsin and one of the first ones in the Midwest in this colorway. And I got it without a markup. I got it without having to fight the dealers, which was great because I had contacted, just for other videos, 12, 14, 16 dealerships on this car, and they all featured the stupidest markups known to man. 30, 40, $50,000 markups on this car. Making this a six-figure car is the dumbest thing you could do. This is not worth what people are paying for right now. Even at its new price point of being right around 52 to 55,000, you are paying competitively for this when you think about the Toyota Supra being right next to it in the same lane. But dealerships crush the enthusiasm for these cars. A lot of people wanna find something wrong with these cars and they really go to the dealerships first. I'm super thankful that I didn't have that issue, but almost everyone else out there right now is. And the fact that Nissan's not doing anything about it is the dumbest thing in the world. It's like ignoring the community that's telling you that there's something wrong. And if Nissan doesn't fix that, nobody's gonna wanna jump into these cars even if they are great cars. It's kind of like the Ferrari debacle on TikTok. Everybody seems to not like Ferrari. The only thing is, is not everybody can afford a new Ferrari on TikTok. But when you take the price out of it and you look at just the actual sentiment people have towards a brand, they don't like Ferrari because of how arrogant they are in terms of their property rights. People are eventually not gonna like Nissan if Nissan doesn't do anything about the dealerships that are upcharging $40,000 on a car that was supposed to be $40,000 at launch. It's the most ridiculous thing in the world. Overall, I really love it. I'm not a huge fan of the Japanese sword design thing that they did with the aluminum. I'm not a massive fan of the Bridgestone tires. I'm not a massive fan on how I don't really understand what the certain modes in the car do because there are no multiple modes. I don't really like the fact that sometimes I can't tell if I'm driving a sports car or a GT car, but these are all very typical things that I've gotten used to because it's a Nissan. Nissan isn't really buying or getting bought for staying stock. These are cars you modify to oblivion. These are cars you throw different wheels, tires, suspension, intakes, tunes, exhausts, everything on. And I think once we start doing that with this car, it's gonna be a blast. And we're gonna be building it over at Martini Works, which I hopefully you guys have subscribed to by now because that's actually where we're gonna be selling parts as well. Because then I don't have to buy ramen, I can get myself name brand stuff like the frozen meatballs to throw in there too, you know what I'm saying? Anyway. That's my take on the Nissan Z. We're gonna have Dakota and Lars drive it to see what their takes are on it over at Martini Works. So if you want to, go check that out as well. Drop a comment below on what you want us to do with this car. And of course, if there's anything more you want me to talk about specifically, we're almost a thousand miles into this. I love the platform, I love the way it feels, but it's definitely not perfect. But I think a lot of things outside of the car are what making people not like this car, not the car itself. I'm Alex, Alex Martino, 200 shows on Instagram. We will see you later, adios. Goodbye.